you so much for joining the Bits of Business podcast. I am your host, Moniala Odunsi, and today I am joined by Juan Agron, who is a product designer at Residivids, a criminal justice data platform that is tackling the massive issue of mass incarceration. Now, without further ado, let's get into the interview. Hi, how are you? So first of all, I just wanted to thank you so much for coming on this podcast and going to speak with me and let the audience and those who are listening um, sort of into the story of your life a bit and into your role. And so sort of start off, I was wondering if you could give everyone a brief description of who you are, and this could really encapsulate a variety of things. But if you were to sort of think of a scenario where someone came up to you randomly and asked you this question on the street, what would you say? Who I am? That's, first of all, that's a really deep question to ask in the middle <laughs> of the street. Um, yeah, no, my name is uh, Juan Agran. Um, I am a designer at Recidivis, um, but we'll get go into that later. So um, I was born in Puerto Rico. Um, my, my dad was in the military. So like around middle school age, I moved to California and then I was raised there. Um, and then for college, I went to the Bay Area, like Oakland, San Francisco, lived there for a while. Um, and yeah, I think that encapsulates a little bit about me. I'd say I'm also into hip hop. I like to snowboard and I'm a food junkie, like specifically okay. sushi. So like, oh, I love sushi. Of- <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes. So thank you for that intro. And so if we sort of rewind and start at the beginning of this sort of long journey of your life and that has brought you to where you are today, um, which is what I like to do with most of my guests, what would you say initially led to your interest in product design? Um, would you have described yourself sort of as a creative mind from young, sort of like an artiste or innovative mind that your classmates would have immediately thought of at school? Or was this more of like a sporadic interest that developed later in your life? Yeah, I, I guess I'm I, I'm kind of old in the sense that, so when I was in school, this, what I do now, like product design, like specifically digital product design didn't exist um, at that time. So I had no idea that I would be doing what I'm doing today back then. But I will say that it's sort of like my interest did lead to this because in school or even since a young age, actually, like, first of all, like I was always um, drawing, like I love to draw. Um, and then I was always like, as a little kid, like rather than playing uh, board games, I would like make my own board games. Like I would like design out my own board games, you know, um, yeah. like with the, my own rules and like just make up the whole thing. Like I always found that super fun. Mm-hmm. Um, my, I, my grandma on my dad's side is a painter and she taught me like the basics of like basically art, color theory, all of that. Um, and uh, my dad was used to be like a uh, carpenter and I always used to play with his like his drafting tools as well like mm-hmm. um, so I think like all those things like just being like, like having paper and pencil available in my hands always mm-hmm. kind of drove me here and also like I do remember like, like if we ever went to visit like family or an aunt when I was younger that didn't have pencil or paper or even crayons I'd be so bored because you know like that was my thing so yeah so I, but yeah, so then uh, the way I got into design was because um, I didn't know what, you know, what I should do in life. Like I guess when, when we were kids, like we're, we don't, we're not really sure what we could do. Um, I had big dreams. Like I wanted to be an astronaut first and I wanted to be a scientist. But then I was like, you know, when I was in high school, I was like a little lost. I was like, I really like to draw, but like, what can I do with, with like drawing? And so um, that's how I found out about like graphic design. Um, and then I just like kind of dove in from there. Like I just went to like, applied to the state university um, and applied to the um, like design department. And yeah, I guess that's how it all started. Mm-hmm. So sort of from what you uh, explained, sort of these outside influences um, influenced what you are now doing in product design. I think that's really, really interesting because um, sort of what I've seen about all my interviews so far is that our outside influences and people who we do grow up with and the experiences that we do experience from young ultimately do play a major part of who we end up becoming. And I think that's a really, really interesting point and just the longevity of it is really interesting to see. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so you sort of touched on this a bit, but on the topic of your early childhood, um, and we think if we're thinking about college and the experiences found in college, I know can 
present a lot of firsts for many. And so first of all, when entering into college, what were your goals and aspirations? You mentioned product design wasn't really something you had previously heard of or wasn't something that was concrete. So was it something that you were really excited for and wanted to wanted to go to to explore your passions and to further your passions? Or was it something that you're just going to because of like the societal norms? And mm. um, how did you how do you think either perception, either or played into ultimately what you got out from your college? That's a really good point too about societal norms. Um, I think at that point, if I try to think back to it, um, the, the, the fact that um, I was expected to go to college and it is generally looked as a good thing, like that played it overall. Um, but it also helped that I kind of knew about graphic design already. So I kind of already wanted to go to college too, just to like learn more about the field. So I think, mm -hmm. I think um, especially for, for, for me, like I didn't know even where to start to like learn about graphic design when I started. And so um, I feel like the only place where I could dive deeper, like make connections and just study the, the, the craft in general was going to, to college. And so that's sort of, that's sort of why um, I, I uh, yeah, I went to college. So it was also, I think there was a, go a girl involved in why I decided to go to college, <laughs> like a girl I liked. Um, but yeah, that's in, in, you know, in retrospect, that was really small compared to like, you know, what, what ended, ended up like keeping me there. Like essentially when I, so I started at um, State University and I was studying like a lot of the humanities and uh, I went to, uh, first I went to like Sacramento State University. And at the time, I'm not sure if it's still this way, but at the time you couldn't just like walk into the design department and, and like get your degree in design. You have to like sort of prove yourself with a portfolio. So prior to even getting into the program, you needed to like work on your art skills and take uh, like a bunch of preliminary classes and pass those and then go through a committee that they, they, they review your portfolio and like make sure that, I don't know, I guess you have the skills um, and then like you're allowed into the design department. Um, so there's a little bit of vetting there. Um, but also, so I feel like that kind of encouraged me to like work harder because I like I'm naturally naturally a competitive person. So the mm -hmm. fact that there was even like, you know, a vetting process, I was like, oh, I got to get in now, you know, like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so like it kind of made it a, com a competition too, like with my peers. So yeah, I think like that drove me and like, I just, I, I think I just fell in love with like the whole college experience too, like just diving deeper into like, not just design, but just like, anything in general when it comes to like uh like literature or like the sciences like especially like um uh sociology was like one of my favorites like just like studying culture and how mm -hmm. people move and why they do they do like that was super fascinating to me so like um I I in general like really love the the college experience yeah that's really really great to hear and so if we sort of think about after college and I know that definitely is a major turning point for a lot of people. I, and as a creative mind, um, there are so many opportunities available to you always. And I'm sure that you felt that quite literally after being released into the real world after yeah. school. So did you have a clear direction of what you wanted to do? Um, and if so, where did this come from? And if not, mm. did this lack of clear direction impact you positively or negatively and how so? Mm. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. I had so I'll, I'll say this about college uh, actually now that you mentioned that so and, and it might be because of my own experience right so um two years into college I transferred to the art institute in San Francisco and and mm -hmm. that college was like very focused on like the craft and art side of it um, which was really great and was kind of what I wanted at the time and why I switched over. Like, I just wanted to dive um, entirely into like the world of art and design. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the downside of that, which I didn't realize at the time, and I'm not sure if it's really a downside, um, maybe it is, uh, but I know like there's some other schools that do a better job with this, but like I left school not knowing anything about business or like the real world. You know, like I was like, like college for me was, uh, especially like when I went like more so to, to the art school, it's all about like diving deep into a project and exploring all the possibilities without constraints of the real world you know like just doing the best work possible mm -hmm. um and and that's you know that's not realistic um so i had to learn those skills like later like after i uh like started working full-time and all of that when i when i left college 
um what did i want to do so that's a, this is actually like i'm not sure if i fully knew this back then but like in retrospect i'm so glad it happened this way so like i've learned that your first job after college is super important mm -hmm. um because you kind of like build up from there and yeah. what i what i saw happen to like some peers and like other people in general like if you start at a at a job that has like no growth opportunity like i guess it also depends on the person right but like depending on what you want to do um and if you want to continue to grow and you have like a clear vision of what you want your career to be like you want to be picky about where you go to work first mm -hmm. um because you could get stuck uh, stuck in like super basic job with no opportunities where like you're basically asked to like photoshop things all day and like that's literally your job you just kind of like create i don't know like little assets for things and like that's cool sometimes like if if um it like if you're not so interested in design but like design you can do so much like in my world like i when i when i learned about like what design truly meant like when i learned that like everything around us was designed by someone for whatever reason right yeah. and then you start to see like oh so that means that if something's not working right that's because the design failed yeah. right like mm -hmm. and like just knowing that coming out of school i was like okay so i wanted i want to have some kind of impact with this power of like of design right mm -hmm. so um i was trying to look for the for the, like the perfect job for that it was really hard back then i applied so much like you know i when i actually when i went to school i was like completely focused on school like i was in especially when i graduated i had like little side jobs here and there but upon graduation my full-time job became to like apply places just like find work like that was like my main focus and i applied to so many places um and then you know thankfully my first job was like really great uh i and and it wasn't even about like it was really great in the sense that i got to learn and 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 be mentored by people who had been doing this for decades upon decades mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and so i went there like for my first you know job interview i showed my printed portfolio back in the day like i showed like all the stuff that i was working on at school yeah. um and yeah and so like that that first job even like it was really really hard for me um because i had to like ramp up and like learn about the real world basically like learn about it like the real world is ran by business right so like it's not really ran by like the idealistic view of like the perfect design right it's it's like at the end of the day to sustain a business you need to make money um and like easier said than done right like obviously everybody knows that but it's like it's it's tricky to to like um apply that to art mm -hmm. um so you know at my first job like thankfully the creative director there like first of all like opened my eyes to like really great design beyond like the aesthetics, which like at school, I feel like at school, like it focused a lot on the aesthetics of things um, and showed me like the business side of things, how to like present a project to a client who may be thinking about something entirely different about their own business and not necessarily about how great the design is um, and how to meet like a client's uh, needs via the design, but like business needs, right? So like, mm -hmm. it's always important like with that when you design something, you're meeting the business needs in the very end like it's designed really great but for a reason right like and that reason changes like in school it used to be like to make the world a better place and like when you enter the world it's like make the world a better place but also we gotta meet these like goals for the business you know like yeah, yeah, um yeah. so like i learned all of that at my first job and like i'm extremely thankful for that i learned so much from what you just said first of all the fact that your first job is really really important i think that's something that I mean, it's probably talked about, but it's not emphasized. And I think that just your story really just shows and you've just showed how important that is. And that necessarily doesn't mean how much money you make your first job or anything like that, but the experiences that you take away from that job and how that shapes your career path. And I think that is a really, really interesting and important point that you just made throughout. I, to your point about money, like I was making less money than all my friends um at that time and i was like oh no like i must like why why am i getting paid like not as much as you guys mm -hmm. but like they in turn looked at me and were like dude you're doing so many cool things and learning so many different things that we're not um in our jobs and like it's just funny like not to like not that that matters but it is funny how like 
it's not always about money. And like, if you want to go to a place where you'll actually like learn a lot and then create a better future for yourself, that's perfectly fine. You know? Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I definitely, definitely agree. And so if we start talking about recidivism, and I'm saying that right, correct? It's such a tough um, Recidivism. Recid recidivism. Wait, recidivism. We need to change our name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. It's, it's a challenge. I like it. So recidivism. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so if we think about the company and sort of the mission behind it and why you ultimately joined the company, if you were to sort of give a one minute elevator pitch on um, what the mission of the company is, what would you say? I'm so thankful I'm not the person who needs to pitch this company. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, so Recidivis, first of all, is a uh, tech nonprofit in the sense that most of the people that work at recidivists are engineer focused like software engineer programmers developers uh, data analysts etc um and we are in the criminal justice space mm -hmm. so essentially what we do is build tools for um like the department of corrections or other agencies uh to essentially th so the united states First of all, there's like 50 very separate states that have their own rules and laws, right? And so uh, that sort of makes it kind of complex for tying together like data points and information across states in order to solve a big problem. Like mm -hmm. in our case, like mass incarceration, we want to help with the fact that there's just too many people in jail and there's things that we could do to help them. Mm -hmm. And so for to solve that problem, to, to, to solve that problem, like all every single state has to work together, every single department, and that's kind of hard right now because they all have their own technologies, their own databases, and they don't really like talk to each other. So mm -hmm. essentially, what Recidivist does is we come in and say, "Hi, this is what we do. We're a bunch of engineers. We want to help you, like, first of all, like figure out what goals, uh, or, or actually like where you're having problems to meet your goals. We can present data to you in a way that's accessible and understandable." Um, and then also secondarily uh, create like the fabric of like tying together all the different departments so that they can communicate to each other, make larger goals and solve bigger, bigger problems, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was one minute, by the way, but like that's <laughs> my idea. Oh, no, no, I think that definitely got to the root of what Recidive is ultimately aims to do. And I think the topic of mass incarceration has become increasingly important um, even now. And we've seen the importance of this especially in this COVID-19 period and just how many people, especially marginalized communities are affected by mass incarceration. And so I definitely do think that the mission of this company is so, so important. And I'm so, so glad that it exists and you guys are doing this. And so first of all, thank you so, so much. And then also um, if we talk more about your specific role at Recidivis with product design. Um, I won't lie, I don't know too much about the specifics into what design and innovation specifically as a job goes into. And so keeping this in mind, what would you say your individual role looks like at Recidivis? What would a day to day for you um, look like? Yeah, it's a really good point. I actually mentioned earlier that like this sort of job didn't exist back in my like when I was in college mm -hmm. and I didn't really go into explaining what it even is so that's a really good question actually yeah. so um and I'm sure like it's different at every job or every uh, company like the exact um you know day-to-day -day task and all that but mm -hmm. essentially uh a lot of tech companies nowadays talk about what they do as a product like and that's kind of how like they they view like their offering essentially um and the design of that product entails, number one, um, focusing on the very end user, like on the human aspect, like the person on the other side who's gonna be using the product, um, learning their needs, learning their pain points, learning like their day-to-day -day essentially, so that a company um, can create a piece of software or tool that you know works perfectly for that person. Mm -hmm. um, so, within digital product design or just design in general. Um, the goal is to, so that there's like researchers, researcher phases, right? Like, like sometimes you're like studying um, all day, like learning about, in our case, so let's say, so one of our products focuses specifically on parole officers and helping them create a better relationship with people who are under supervision so that you know, to get them out of the system, essentially. Mm -hmm. But in order to do that, like, 
you know, I've never been a parole officer and like no one at my company has ever been a parole officer. So we need to understand like, okay, so what did, what what is their job like? What are things that they're going through? Um, not in the sense that like where we we like specifically design things that are only for parole officers, but really with with um, the goal in mind of like, hey, creating a better relationship with the, their clients, like the people who they are serving. Um, so what does my day consist of? So it could be one day I could be like designing on the computer. Do you know about Figma? Yes, I do know what Figma is. I could not figure it out. It was so yeah. difficult. <laughs> I lived, yeah. Oh my God, it's so, so difficult, but yeah. Nice. yeah. Well, okay, so yeah, so for those who don't know, uh, Figma is just a, a UI design program. Um, back in the day, like every app that you had on your phone or even on the computer, it was literally designed using Photoshop and Photoshop was meant like to design, or sorry, to retouch photos. So that's how backwards like the comp like this whole industry was. Like we were literally using a photo editing software to create like user uh, interface like apps. Um, but nowadays we have things like Figma, which essentially allow us to like design the the yeah the apps that you that you use. So, okay, one day of the week I could be like completely all day just working in Figma, just like designing the buttons, the visuals, like everything about an app, right? Um, another day I may be like just learning about like for like kind of like example I used to you're like parole officers, like what is their day to day like? Like I need to understand their life in order to design something that actually makes sense for them. Um, and then I guess a, a third, I guess, yeah, third, if we were to like cut it into chunks, another third would be um, just meeting with other people in the company uh, to like work together with them. Like specifically, like even like, so I mentioned like most of the company's engineers, I'm also not an engineer, <laughs> but I need to understand like what they do in order for me to like design things that will help them. Um, so like, it's super collaborative. I may be like, you know, uh, having meetings with engineers or product managers who are essentially people who are in charge of like making sure that a product gets from point A to point B, essentially like launching things. Um, meeting with uh, the design researcher who is someone who literally like schedules calls with parole officers or users in general and just like talks to them and records interviews kind of like what we're doing right now and then like we can study and learn from them. Yeah. Um, so like collaboration and that's sort of like, yeah work side of things is also like a third of what I do. But I think that that was a really good overview. And sort of what I've gotten from that is the flexibility behind what you do. And I think that that is a major aspect of innovation that I love in design, that you do have that flexibility to go into a variety of things. You can do, like you said, data research, you work with Figma, you do a variety of things. And I think that's really, really cool. And so could you give insight into what sort of, so you think of an idea and you design it maybe on Figma or some other resource, what would the process of deployment and actually implementing the idea look like for the products that are thought of? Is there sort of like a testing phase? Um, is there like yeah. a preliminary phase? And what does that look like? Yeah, I guess before diving into any software or before going into the computer, um, the, my work usually starts for like asking questions, mm -hmm. like one meeting with people who know more than me about what I'm trying to make. Like mm -hmm. there's usually like at, a, at, a, at an executive level or like Clementine who you met or like there's other people in the company who like just learn, uh, know more about the space than I do, right? So I try to absorb like everything that they know and like what problems we're trying to solve so that I can one, like generate questions that I can then solve via design. Uh, and to, to just like better inform myself, but like I need to be aware of like what the like the root cause of an issue is. So it's like start with a big problem usually. Like let's say, in in <laughs> in our case, the giant problem of mass incarceration. Like how do you even solve mass incarceration? And like just keep asking why. Like why things are the way they are, right? It's like because of X Y Z. Okay, but why is that? Why are systems that way? Why is the process that way? And like just keep asking why until you get to like the very technical day to day of like someone like a parole officer who's like struggling at their job because they have too many things to about to like yeah to juggle mm -hmm. um and so like that way you start to like dissect a huge problem and break it up into chunks that are manageable um so then that looks like kind of like this to me like i just keep this notebook always like i brought it now in case like i want to write something down during you know, during our talk but like i just take notes i like draw like little like ideas that i may have right 
um i just put like all my ideas down on this notebook and usually like a notebook is better for me because i can like write or draw right there is better than like notes on the computer for me mm -hmm. um so i usually like take down a bunch of notes uh draw things draw ideas then i run that by my team um there's also there's like i'm always working in a team like it's never like this this is super important. The, the, you, as a designer, you never want to like isolate yourself because designers can usually like go deep into a rabbit hole of like solving big problems and then come back and it doesn't work in the real world. So like it's super important as, for me as like a designer to like always show my work fast and early. Like, hey guys, what do you think about this? Let's just like throw ideas out, right? And I'm not the only one coming up with ideas either. Like um, the, the process of design is not just for like the designer to do. Like um, I also consider like consider it really important to like allow everyone to kind of become a designer just like everyone can throw in ideas or like you know like problems that we may encounter like everyone brings something to the table mm -hmm. um and everyone's coming at, at this uh problem from a different perspective too like an engineer is going to have a very different perspective than a business person and that sort of thing mm -hmm. um so then we all throw ideas we got up um then we just uh create a hypothesis right so we're like okay so we know all this um, and know we know like these are the issues and here's how here's and yeah I guess uh, in, in our process like here's three ways that we may like attempt to solve this and like mm -hmm. we can sketch them like or we can use like post-its and like just like write out like here's some ideas uh, and usually we want to have like three separate like three is an arbitrary number like if you have more or less mm -hmm. um, but like yeah just create like hypotheses like hey maybe we can do this or maybe we can do this other thing and then it look very different um and then we can test those ideas so um with programs like figma or like even if you have like the power of a developer who can code websites really fast like if you can prototype something and like test it in the real world like put it in front of real people and see if it's even like solving anything like even if you want to like um ask like you just throw a survey out there and see like you know to answer some of the questions that you have and see if there's any interest for that sort of thing like that sort of a product um there's many ways to validate before like even starting to like you know build a real like a real software mm -hmm. um, so we'll test a little bit we kind of get a sense of like what's working what's not working we iterate on it and then we like then we start to to build things um but the process is always like design exploration sort of test that test to like our ideas okay are there any good ones are there bad ones let's work on the bad ones the good ones let's build them right mm -hmm. and then whatever we build also test that and like it's just like a constant cycle of like improving yeah. something and putting it out there which is by the way that's what's new in design like back in the day design like if we want to go super super old school mm -hmm. like if you design a chair like there's no iterative design like you just design a chair and like once it's out there it's out there wow. whereas now with digital product design that's like the power of data is very new and the fact that you can keep learning and improving a product that's out there um so like yeah so like in today's day and age like everything that uh, a digital product designer puts out there it, there's always iteration and fixing and improving and it just lives on forever really no i think that's really really interesting and another question that i have is when you do test these things and see if they do work how do you measure success especially for something as complicated as mass incarceration and something that's so deep rooted in society how how does the company is generally measure the, the success of a product and whether something is actually working um that's actually super important to us so there's a few things that we do number one we set the goals early on um and we also set um what we call like backstop backstop metrics which is essentially like if we create something that's actually doing the opposite of what we intended to do like not helping and instead like maybe allowing for example if i want to use parole officers again as an example here if whatever we design for a pro officer is allowing them to be more punitive as opposed to rehabilitative in their job like just kind of sending like make it easier to send people back to jail or that sort of thing that's not what we want so at that point like we just and like we uh give rid of that product like just take it out that's not what we what we want to do and so we're constantly measuring and like seeing like what's happening within the product so number one like set those like um those metrics of like what do we not want to happen with this? And if it does happen, let's just get rid of it, right? So that's number one. And then number two, like the goal of like 
um, let's say uh, with recidivism, for example, like we can see whether people like whether our tools are having an impact on sending more people to jail or less people to jail. So like we're always keeping track of that and um, basic, basically like justifying the, the what we're putting out there for um, for either pro officers or even like leaders in the space. By the way, recidivism, recidivist, see what we did there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like a lot of our tools simply like sh display data to people in the criminal justice space to just like find like where issues are happening. So with that alone, like we can instantly see if we're meeting our goals or not because like we're looking at all these dashboards, all these graphs of like, okay, what we're doing is actually helping or it's actually not having that much impact. What can we do better and that sort of thing? Yeah, and I think that's a really good system of checks and balances and the fact that you do look at specifically what effect that it is happening. And it's important that if it's not working, you cut it off immediately. And if it is, you continue. And I think that's a really, really good system. And so as my final question, as the interview is sadly coming to an end, throughout the interview, we sort of talked about the ups and downs of your career and the beginning and of where you are now. And so looking back into your journey, what would be your advice for those who are looking into the field of product design? Um, and maybe what advice would you even give your younger self? Okay. Okay, yeah. So, oh my God, there's so much. Okay, this is a deep question. So, okay. First of all, be fearless. Um, step out of your comfort zone. Like, put yourself out there. Especially for me, like, I am by nature more of an introvert. And, like, I have, like, uh, it's, it's harder for me to, like, step out of my comfort zone. So, like, con I need to, like, constantly push myself to, you know, take risks and it's okay if you fail, like just get back up and keep going. Um, so that's number one. Um, and then kind of like associated with that is like, keep like, keep learning, like always learn. Like if, even, it doesn't even have to be like about design. Like sure, if you're like really into design, that's gonna make you like a rock star designer, definitely learn that. But also like learn about different things, learn about as much as you can. Um, because that's what makes people like really interesting. Like when they start learning about different things and then it intersects with like their, their core skill, you know, like um, before, before joining recidivist, like um, I wasn't like too deep into criminal uh, justice reformation. Like I kind of knew some of the issues that were going on in the U S but like, I wasn't super deep into it. And now like that I'm here, I'm like learning so much about it. Mm -hmm. And like, I can bring my like design skills and what I know about, about design and apply it to like a completely different space, you know? Wow. Um, yeah. So also, yeah, just keep learning, um, make friends mm. and make friends with people who are smarter than you, I would say, too. Like for me, like I, that I always try to be like the the dumbest person in the room, in the room, essentially, like just learn from everyone. Um, if you're if you're like in a room where you're like you feel like you're the smartest person, like that's probably not a good idea. Just like be surround yourself with people who like you're genuinely interested in. Yeah. um and like just learn from everyone around you oh, thank you so so much and i think those are really valuable lessons that anyone can really take and thank you so much for this interview i really enjoyed talking with you i think Likewise. that the mission of the company and just even your story has been so interesting and inspirational and i really appreciate it thank you you too we'll talk soon then bye Bye. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bits of Business podcast. I had such a great time learning about Juan's story, the mission of Breast of Viz. And if you would like to learn more about the inspiring mission of Breast of Viz, make sure to check out restativiz.org and tune in soon to hear the story of another inspiring innovator, entrepreneur, and leader. Thank you. Bye.